Okay, hello guys. So for uh, for this video, I'm just would like to explore the exercises I process in lecture 24 and lecture 25. I process a, a, a code for that solution. And here, very quickly, I would like to explain this code. I would like you to really understand uh, uh, every single exercise of those. So what do you gain you more uh, like uh, skills in how to program uh, in Java? So. Uh, in lecture 24, I, we posted three uh, exercises. I will begin with exercise number three, which is a halving distance. And by halving distance between two arrays, X and Y, it calculates how many elements are different at the corresponding coordinates. Like if you have X1, 2, 3, and Y5, uh, uh, 2, 4. So it compares this element 1 with this element, the corresponding one. If they are different, this HD, the Hamming displacement, is increased by 1. So in these two arrays, I have this as for position number 1. 1 and 5 are different, which is 1. 2 and 2 are not different, so we not count that. 3 and 4 are different, so we have 2 out of 3. So HD is 2, and the HD percentage is 2 divided by the 3, which is the size of the array, which is 66%. I'm asking you to write a Java program that accepts the size of X and Y, make necessary condition constraints. They are both must be the same size, must be greater than zero with the size. Then you ask user to enter the elements, then you calculate HD and HD percentage. You can find that uh, uh, file, uh, it's called lecture24 underscore ex3. You can find it in, in, uh, in a file we post and uh, in uh, uh, as a file as a java file too so let's start do that the program is asked you uh, to ask the user to enter the size of the first array so we, i ask user here to enter the size of first array i do array size one which is integer here i accept it as integer from the user and then i ask the user to enter the second size of second array i get it as size two array here i do a symbol if this if well uh, make sure that the array size one is less is not less than zero or equal zero and array size two is greater than zero and it makes sure that array size one is not equal array size two okay so they are not uh, if, if they are not equal if the size of each any one of them is less, less than or equal zero so it doesn't work so it would say to you the array a message must have the same size and greater than zero. And everything in the program is an else statement, which means if this condition is satisfied, I will not go through the program. If the array size one is less than zero, or as you see, or array size two is less than zero, or you enter both size, but they are not the same not equal I will not do anything as a program see that's mean if I have an F and another else okay so if we just try to run that here he asked me here what is the size of the first array let me see zero for example and two for the second array no it doesn't accept that it said you have you must have the same size and greater than zero in order to be really professional and to be specific to know what is exactly the error here if it is uh, less than zero one of them or uh, uh, the size is not matching you have to do some exceptions and throw if you remember do some try here and do some if statements and throw and have specific messages for that if you do a real professional work and if I do run that again, the program is terminated like that. If I do run that and enter two for the first array and three for the second array, it does accept that too, the same, so it should be the same size. Okay, if we pass that and go to the else, if I'm sure that the size of the two arrays are not zero and they are the, quite equally the same, I would declare the two arrays, integer or whatever, uh, with the same size here, size one, size two, and then I'm asking the user to enter the element of the first array and asking the user to enter the element of the second array. This is like formatting just to tell me the first array, second array, element number one, number two, and so on. I plus one because I starting with zero and I would like I to start with one. It's formatting for asking user as a message to the user. 
Okay, and uh, uh, so here I'm asking user to, to fill in the arrays. Let, it, let, let me run that and show you. So if I set it 3 and 3, that okay. Now I'm inside this loop. It tell me enter element number 1 of first array. So okay, let's say it's uh, 3. Let's say enter element number 1 of the second array. Okay, it's 3. So it say enter element number two. So this is do that. I plus one do that. Did you one and and two, four and four, element number three, five and five. You would have zero because they are all the same at the corresponding one. So now you are filling the array using this for loop. After that, I'm I'm declaring counter counter here. I declare it as double to count how many elements in corresponding are the same, and I do a loop over the size of any one of the array because they are the same size and they compare each corresponding elements together. Element at array 1, element at array 2. If they are not equal, this counter will be increased by 1. And at the end, I will display counter and display the percentage which is counter divided by the size of the array. If you see that, I entered the same, 3 and 3, 4 and 4, 5 and 5, so HD was 0 and the percentage was also 0. So if you run that again, Let's say three and sorry and three. First element one and one, two and three. So we have one mismatch here. Four and five. We have two mismatch here. So two HD is two, and the percentage is 0 0.66, which is uh, uh, two divided by three. That's why I divided counter as double. See guys, because I have a, I have a, like a division here. So just a very quick here. For, the, for exercise number three, which I see the easiest between these two ones. Let's go with um, exercise, um, let's see exercise number one, for example. Exercise number one here, um, I did some complication on that. Um, you can find, I, I created a file here for you. Uh, I will post this file too. So I'm just doing here more complications. So uh, I'm, I'm telling you, just ask the user, with the array size. It should be integer and greater than zero. Then you accept in inputs, inputs greater than two from the user until the user enter s to less sign. User keep entering input, you put this enter into your array if this input is greater than two. Okay, this is not uh, uh, enough. Fill in the input in the array if the input is a prime number and the array size not reached. So you enter the size for the array, for example, three, and you keep entering without entering s dollar sign. But you but you reach here the size of the array, so you have to say that to the user. You display the appropriate message to the user, and you display after filling the array after you fill that. The problem here, you have to make sure to do a lot and a lot and a lot of checks. The value the user enter will not go into your array unless it is a prime number and its value is greater than 2 and this prime number is very important what is prime number prime number is any number that only divided by itself and by 1 for sure so for example but and greater than 2 should be greater than 2 so for example 3 you don't have any any number less than 3 that 3 can divide it on 3 cannot divide it on 2 and 3 can divide it on 1 so it's a prime number. Prime number is a prime number. A number is a prime number if it, if it can divide it only by two numbers, itself and the one. Let's go with four, for example. You would find four divided by two, so it's not a, pr a prime number. Let's go with five. Five is divided by five and divided by one only, so it's a prime number. Six is divided by three, not a prime number. Seven is divided by seven and one two only, so it's a prime number. So in order to detect any number is a prime number or not, if the user enter a number for me, I would have to check for every single number that less than this number, that this one is not divided by any number less than it, which makes a, a, a lot of conditions inside here. So let's go one by one. So I'm asking the user, I'm using this one because I modified here at this Word file. I will upload that as a PDF to, uh, to the old. So this one, uh, 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 could be uh, like um, uh, you have to ask the user with the size of n. Let's go here. 
this is um, I guess array one here yeah this is one of the array one here so I'm um, I'm divided array size so let's uh, get rid of the terminated frame right now this is a scanner here please asking the user here please enter the size of the array and array size is in I declared array with this size okay let's go with that so I did a do here because I would like now to accept element from the user so I'm asking the user here to enter element number k plus one k is equal to zero here so I'm asking here enter the first element please and m is the first element user entered and I'm going to start checking now so m should be greater than 2 if you remember it should be greater than 2 so if m greater than 2 I would do something here if not I will tell you here your input must be greater than 2 this is an else here okay very easy but if you entered a number that is greater than 2 is this enough as I asked you to be into your array you declared here as array no it's not enough this number should be greater than 2 it should be a prime number 2 to so any number m you enter to me if it's greater than 2 I would make a for loop starting from 2 up to m m is the number you gives me and I check for every single number less than you enter to me if it has an increment if it's divided or not if at any number I find a division here I should declare to the user that this is not a prime number and I, I have a flag number here I, I declare it as true it is prime is a put in here I will switch it off I said prime is false and I'm prick here at this f I would append into my array the elements but our element in order to be appended here the prime should be true so this one should be true it is true I switch it on at the beginning and if it finds something that is divided with so it's not a prime it's switched off again so here it would be added only if it's prime if this one is succeed it's went to the end without break and without assigning to false and k which is the uh, uh, increment or the index of the array is less than the array size minus one array size you entered I should not add for example if you enter the size of the array at three I have to make sure that I'm entering into my array only three elements so if you pass that I add it to the array and if else here it comes to else uh, uh, it's greater than zero and at the end I should ask the user please enter s dollar sign to terminate or any key to continue user can enter as many as he wants but I will not enter in the array uh, only the number of the uh, element of the array and this is called I call terminate as character which has defined at the beginning here this terminate is used to accept uh, the character input from the user and uh, if it's do, it's not a sign <coughs> it will go out so, so that's why I created do while so do that while the terminate character from the user is not s dollar sign and after the while I would like I would print out the array inside here so let me uh, uh, run that so it will ask me at the beginning here please enter the size of the array so I would say 4 take care guys so 4 no problem this is the first one here please enter the size of the array so array size now is equal 4 and I created array with a size 4 and I created integer x of 0 so do inside do it tell me please enter the element number 1 of the array so for example I have to enter something greater than 2 so let me enter 2 you will tell me your input must be greater than 2 I will not do anything here I will go here directly your input must be greater than 2 and then I would ask you for in at all cases I would ask you for a character to terminate so enter s dollar sign to terminate or any key to continue any key like k for example so it say told me again please enter element number one because I didn't enter element number one yet so I will say three take care guys three is not a prime number because this loop will work here unless you find nothing is created and everything runs okay no messages s dollar sign to terminate if I entered s dollar sign now so 
the array size is four, which means four locations or initiated as zeros. And here entered only three. So if it's still assigned, it will terminate this and go to this uh, uh, for loop just printed out the elements. So it will say that element number one of array is three, which as I entered on the prime and everything is okay, then the rest are zeros because I didn't do anything more. Right? I didn't do it's, it's to remain as I initialized it. So again, array size is three, element number one is three, element number one is four. Take care. Oh, sorry, this is, uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, enter s dollar sign to minutes four is a corrector, something else other than s dollar sign. So let us me enter four now. So it's okay. And um, four is not a prime number. Uh, uh, enter s to terminate again. So it said, told me now is four is not a prime number. That's why it goes through here. And when I find here, it find i, which is equal at two. That four divided by two does not have a remainder, which is not, which means it's, it's it's not a prime number, so it's not added. And if you see that, uh, person you need to continue. Let's say d for example. So take care here. It tell me please enter the element number two of the array. Please enter the element number two unless I entered number two before, but it's not correct, so it doesn't go to my array. So it re ask me again to enter element number two. Here I said five, for example. As the last sign, so I, I entered two, any element. Enter element number three, I entered eight, for example. Eight is, is not a prime number. So uh, S, anything. So it asked me again for element number three. So now I enter 11, which is a prime number. So now I'm okay. If I decided I will not enter anything more to the array, if I tried, even if I tried. So let me try. G, and enter element number four. Let's say it's five, which five is, is a prime number, but five is not added. Even it's still uh, uh, taking uh, like um, numbers from me, you have to fix that, guys. Can you fix that? Stop uh, doing anything. But I just would like to train you to have a size and have s dollar sign as a corrector and so on. So now if I enter s dollar sign, I would have 3, 5, and 11. Even 5 is a prime as entered, but is not added to the array because it's out of the size of the array. So that was for exercise number 2. Um, let's go to exercise number... That was exercise number 1, exercise number 2. Yeah, exercise number 2 is uh, somehow not easy, but it's challenging somehow. It asks you to accept integer again greater than zero from the user and save the array. Uh, 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 so we ask very straightforward the user to enter the side of the array. So let's go here. Let's first uh, explain that. And you find the maximum value of the input. You find the minimum value of the input. User enter for through your array. And you try to put the maximum value at the most right position, maximum at the right position, minimum at the most left position. It's a kind of sorting but it's not a full sorting for that. This is exercise number two, which is here, array two. So it starts very easy, integer array size, please enter the size of the array, and you take that, and it just check if it's less than zero. Uh, it said no, it's less than zero, else it's go here and create an array, you create maximum, minimum, maximum location, and so on. You do a for loop, ask the user to enter the element, put the element inside your array, and you start your checking here. So if i is equal equal zero, which means it's the first element I entered. So I initialize the maximum and minimum with this first element. So the first element the user enter is considered by me the maximum element. And else for the second element I mean, I have already initialized the maximum and minimum with the first element. So if array of i, the new enter, the new entered element, which is starting from element number two, is greater than max, that's mean this one, this new one is a max, this new one is a max. And I have the maximum location. So maximum location now is converted to number two, position number two. I will tell you what I will do with that. And if array of i, the new element, is less than minimum, which was the first one, so this minimum now is uh, 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 array uh, the new element and I'm trying to do a switching just to put this minimum at the first one 
and take the first one to put here at this current location. So I'm doing temp save it, the first element here and put the first element equal array of i which is a current element and reboot at the current element the temp which is uh, was at the first location. So I'm switching. I'm doing that forever. So everything, every element entered to me, I compared with minimum. If it is a new minimum, I take it back to the first location. I do that inside one loop. After the loop is finished here, I would switch. I have the maximum location here. After the switch, I have the maximum location. So maximum location, for example, at location number three. So I'm trying to just switching that put this maximum location at the most right, array size minus one, which is the most last element of the array. I saved it here and put it with max, so max will be the, the last one, and I put the current location, max location, which I saved with temp, which was the last one. Okay, so at the end, I, I have a for loop here that entered, that explain or, or explore, um, just present you the number of elements inside your array after this kind of small sorting and the maximum and minimum will also be appeared here. So, for example, size of array is 4, enter element number 1. So element number 1 is 2, for example. So what's happening here, let's go with the code, if I enter 2 here, this i equal equals 0, yes, I'm at the first element. So maximum and minimum now equal to array of i which has entered to so maximum and minimum and minimum now are two. So if I do that again, for the second element I entered one. I'm not here, so I go here. Let's go to this one. Is the current one, which is one now, greater than max, which is two? No, it's not. So max is still at the first location. But is array less than minimum? Minimum I initialize as two. Is this one less than minimum? Yes, it is. So here, I I put minimum. I override minimum to be the current one. So minimum now will be one, and ten will be array of zero, which is two, and array of zero, which is location here, be array of i, which is one. So one comes here and two comes here, and and the third one lets me say it's ten. So if I come here, is this max? Yeah, yeah. So this one is greater than max, which was two. So max now becomes 10. And the location of max now become at the third location. And at the first one, for example, I entered, uh, let's say three. And three is nothing. It's this same location here. Okay. If I run that, so element number one will be one. One is a minimum one. So it's the first one here doing the switching. Two comes here, and I'm switching three with 10. 10 has come as the beginning, and the maximum is 10, and the minimum is one. So this one, this program could be done in different ways. I did it this, this way, it's detailed. Maybe a short way could be, a more intelligent and smart way could be done here. You have to try doing that, guys. So that was for um, exercise number one, which is a prime number here. I posted this code to you also. Exercise number two, which is just explained right now. Exercise number three, which is having this explained in this video too. And exercise number four, which is a 2D we did at the class, and we have the video already uh, posted online. Thank you for listening. Please try to uh, uh, understand, try to modify upload these ones to the Java program and try to play with that. Thank you and see you. Bye-bye.